keep my teeth in the shape. <laughs> <laughs> Remember EBT, she was lost, get a lip on a bit, got me fresh, dressed, get like a million bucks, give a bag to me in the cut, you can see it in my shirt, tell that you a dog, when I get mad at the trust, tell me when I get older, when I'm glad this was hard for me, 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 Wow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Social motherfucking hustlers were here. This is episode 105.5. I got the motherfucking 104.5. 104.5. Like this. Okay, 105.5. 105.5. We on 105 right now, man. Okay. Damn, I'm telling you, Chris. I just, I'm the one that dropped the episode. Put the drugs down. It's 104.5. I'll let you have it right now, but we'll come back to that later. <laughs> Not trust me. It's your nigga, your friendly neighborhood player, John J in the building. We got a very special guest in the house. Before we do that, Jack, introduce yourself. Man, you know what you're doing, man. Uh, I'm nobody special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yo, 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 we got the motherfucking God MC himself oh, in this man. motherfucker, man. What's, What's up, boy? What's, What's up with you, man? Bro. State your name, bro. Introduce yourself. Uh, shoot, man. I'm Joseph. Uh, you know, from the south side of Arlington, Texas. 2100 block. 2100. You know what I'm saying? Right there, West Creek, Southern the Coop, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we got your uh, DJ slash manager in the building, yeah. the building yeah. as well. You know, Swerve. What's up? What's poppin', man? I'm going to you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, bro, I just want to say first, I'm glad you're here. You know what I'm saying? We've been chopping up for a second, you know, uh, on the phone or whatnot. Just... Uh, really on on the music till bro. Uh, you know, you let me hear your music. How you was coming, bro? I was like, you know, I was I was really impressed. Like, cause I'm gonna keep it a band. Like a lot of niggas around this area. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. as far as like the musical frequency you got. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't possess that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I that. So like. Like a lot of times, you know, when you when you think of BFW music or Arlington music or just Dallas as a whole, like it's it's always that we are placed in this one box. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So you definitely outside of that box. Yeah. So explain that. explain to me how you got outside of that box. Man, uh shoot, just just my upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Like neither one of my parents are from Texas. Like okay. my, my dad is from LA. You know, South Central, he was like, he was raised, uh, you know, in the heart, in the thick of it. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, having him, that West Coast influence, and then my mom, she from Virginia, and uh, she grew up, you know, Southern Baptist Church. So, right. you know what I'm saying? Being in that, and then being in Arlington, bro, we a cultural hub. Everybody's exactly. from everywhere. It's you know, and so you influenced by a bunch of different things. Everything. Like, you know, I got homies from Detroit, from Baltimore, from like just everywhere, bro. So yeah. it just played a factor, you know what I'm saying? Like people introducing me to, you know, old school Jay Z at the same time we listening to Goo Right. So it's like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's just like it perfectly, you know, blend, match with those. hundred percent. So what um how did you get into music, bro? Explain it. Let's start there. Yeah. So, hear that. Yeah, so uh I've, I, the crazy thing is I've always wanted to like make music. I remember uh, you know, watching Hustle and Flow when I was like 11, 12 yeah. and being like, I gotta give me like a little writing pad. You know what I'm saying? Right. And making my first beat. You know, but I was so heavy in the basketball. I knew that was, you know, my way out, like my way to get to college and see the world. So, mm-hmm. you know, you know, the music grind take it take time, you know, and I didn't have it at the time. So right. when I went off to college, you got a little bit more time playing ball. Um but I did a talent show. I was watching like way too much deaf uh poetry jam. Okay. And I thought I was like, you know what I'm saying, common or something. Yeah. And so yeah. I uh, <laughs> I joined a talent show. What you did like with them uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them type, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And so I thought I was tight. And uh I did a little spoken word and this this little, you know, white girl came up to me afterwards and was like, Hey, you ever thought about like uh rapping? Yeah. I'm like, listen, 
like I'm a, I'm I'm a serious basketball player. I'm going yeah. pro. <laughs> I'm going yeah, I got time now. <laughs> you know, but it just stuck with me. Yeah. It stuck with me. Um, just to you know try it, and so uh, I knew somebody who had a studio out there in East Texas where I was going to school at the time, and um, went in there, recorded the song, and ten years later, you know, here we are. Yes. Hey, now, bro, I'm definitely fucking with your last project, bro. Mm-hmm. The, uh, and uh, focus your aim. Yeah, <laughs> clip. Uh, clip. Give me what what inspired that that phrase? Focus your aim into your clip. Uh, watching mm-hmm. The Punisher for like the fourth time. Like the you know what I'm Yeah, I was watching The Punisher, and I was just really inspired by like how homie was like, like nothing was gonna stop him. From like achieving, you know, his goal of revenge, avenge, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And it was like, homie was just so focused and like, it was something about that drive that like inspired me. And I just tweeted one day, I was like, man, focus your aim into the clip. Yeah. And uh, my producer, Da Vinci, was, he hit me back and was like, yo, bro, like, we should turn that into something. And I'm like, yeah, that do sound kind of tight. But uh, at the time, I wasn't like, I was in the mode of recording Southside. You know, okay. I was recording that, and that was the the you know the project that I was sending you records uh, right. from. And uh, at the same time, I got inspired by the fact like I was coming up on ten years of making music, and I was like, okay. I had an honest conversation with myself, like, bro, can you do this at this like at this level? Like, how much longer can you do it? Right. And uh, you know, it's just one of those serious conversations, like, bro, I got a life, I got a son, like, can I? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, this taking away time. Right. And so I was like, okay, if if I did end it, like if I ended it in these next 90 days, how would I want to go out? And I was like, I want to put out, you know, another project. I want to uh, do a live stream show. I want to put out a live album. Yeah. And like just empty the clip. I do. I want to do four videos off of the thing, you know, the best videos I've ever made. Yeah. And so, man, that was just like the program. Was like, yeah. You know, and so the whole team went in there with like, my producer Da Vinci, that was his mindset making the beats, and uh, you know my director uh, Dom shot it. He same same focus. And, yeah, because like, the visuals was icy, bro. Like he, so is he coming up with these ideas or so? Is he something you both? Yeah, I just so I would like that. Yeah, I would yeah. start with like the uh, you know I have like an idea. Like bro, I watch I watch I'm a movie watcher, and so yeah. uh, you know I might be inspired by a movie or like like with the song Chicken Spot. My mama live on the east side of Fort Worth now. And we was coming off the highway and I just seen William Chicken lit up with that yellow light. And I was like, ooh, that's hard. Yeah. And so when we got to making the music, Da Vinci had played that beat. And the first line I just said was, post up at the chicken spot to count my guac. Yeah. And I was like, okay, got it. Yeah. And so, you know, that was like, that was just a weird instance where it was inspired by something I saw. And so, uh, you know, it just came different ways, you know. So like with chicken spot, we worked backwards. Mm-hmm. But with top tier, it was like from the Punisher, that was a direct like inspiration from like, Joe Pesci and the Punisher in that scene at the end of the Punisher, like the last episode, I think. But when the Punisher was getting banged up by the dude with one eye, yeah. and like it was like a moment where he was like going in and out, and he was like in his face, like shaking him and stuff and slapping him and beating him up. So that's what like that camera angle was inspired by, like that. Okay. And okay. then a bunch of like you know mafia movies, yeah. <laughs> you know. So uh, what, what made you want to put Coach Tim, Coach Tim on the chicken spot? Man, me and Tev, like since uh. When I was back in Missouri, he was just showing love. Um, and my vi- my 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 homie who used to shoot my videos, uh, Mo Films, he had worked with him a couple of times. Like, man, y'all got to tap in. This is two, two, three years ago. And so we always just been supporting each other, showing love, but never had a record. Yeah. But when I heard that beat, you know, I was like, there's nobody who's going to, like, float over this better than Ted. Like, right. I just knew. I was like, he's going to spag on this. And so, you know, we made it. And I sent the right to him. He was like, Psh. Done deal. All right. Yeah. yeah. I was on the line the other day on, on a clubhouse and you've been one of the neighbors and does it around the city that's actually coming up right now to keep it really, really looking out for it. So mm-hmm. that's dope if you got a future with him now too. Yeah, he's special, man. And I uh like he just he's uniquely himself. Like he doesn't sound like anybody else. Yeah. And those are the type of people I like to work with, people who like they just do what they do. You know right. what I'm saying? Where, where, do you, where do you feel like you got your sound from? Which is great for your sound. Your sound is really different. It doesn't sound like a. It sounds like a South Ag rapper. If, if you know, if you, if you know who we fuck with, it sounds like a South Yeah, it do sound like. He got a lot of oil to me. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, so. But it's strong. I be thinking like, like, what do you feel like separates you from the rest of these artists? Like, you know, you see? Man, I'm just uniquely myself. You know? you know what I'm saying? I'm not like, I talk about what I've been through or what the people around me been through. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like, 
I feel like a lot of people gaslight it and they, they make music that they think people want to hear. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm making like what's, you know, what I'm, what I'm convicted to make. Yeah. So if I'm moved to make something and say something, then I'll say it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's kind of like what I'm inspired by. Like I said, it's just Arlington is a crock pot. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like from, from, we had, we had gangster music. We had yeah. dance music. We had real hip hop. Like we, everything is here at the same time. And so, uh, you mix that all together, and you know I feel like I come out. So, <laughs> so you know, hey, nigga, hey, uh, just to give you some history, bro. I just found this out recently. So every like ag thoroughbred I run into, I always let it know. Back in like the nineteen third, like forties type shit, early gangster area. So early before that, er, probably before that. I'm not sure, but Arlington has a history found of being like the first Vegas. It was like what? Arlington was like the first Vegas. That's crazy. Before Vegas was Vegas, like yeah. all the gangsters used to come out here, fucking gamble and wow. make shit shake, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But, bro, it seems like you tapped in a lot to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like even like on your Instagram and shit like that, it seemed like you, you spiritual or whatnot. Like, what, what, what did you experience in life that really just was like, Hey, I need to tap into myself. I need to know myself better. Yeah, man, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, so I grew up, uh, like I said, my mom, she was huge in, you know, in the church. So going with her, um, like I feel like I, you know, I think about this often is that like I've always wanted to do something that was like greater than myself. Right. And so, uh, just growing up in church, man, and just having that weight on my heart, like I recognize like I'm not, uh, enough on my own and there had to be somebody to create me, you know? And so just doing that and then coming to, you know, the thing about my faith is like, I came to the end of myself, which, which enabled, um, you know, I feel like God to work in and through me. Cause I was like, yo, on my the own. Indio, so what you mean by that? Like, okay. So here, here's the exact moment where it all changed for me. Like I said, I grew up in church. But I was going through this time where, like, my parents was, like, going through that go-through. Like, I grew up in a real dysfunctional household. I'm talking, like, you know, just not, no, no domestic violence, but every other type of, like, like, abuse, like, and then poverty. And, um, you know, so seeing that, I was having a hard time. I was older. I was getting ready to go off to school. Like, all my homies had committed today, and I still hadn't yet. And I'm going through this whole go-through. And then, uh, my mom gets sick, and she's, like, almost dying. And, uh, you know, I, I go off to school. I'm sending the little money I'm getting from the, you know, my little, uh, basketball check or whatever. I'm sending that back home. Yeah. And I just felt like this weight, like, yo, man, something was like, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I was hating myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, man, I just, I felt like at that moment, like, God reached out to me, okay. you know, and, uh, from there, bro, I just, I, you know, I, I subscribe to Christianity, and so I, I gave my life to Christ in that moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in my little dorm room by myself. And from there, I felt like God just started to work on me. Yeah. And it's been a long process, you know, a lot of ups and downs. It's gotten really, really ugly at yeah. times, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Even like with having faith. But, um, just being tapped into that, man, it's like, you know, it's a, it's, it's been an anchor for me. Cause it's like, I know I won't go certain places or do certain things that don't align. Don't, yeah. don't align yeah. with my principles. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right, so, that's real. That's some real ass shit, bro. And let's uh, on that. Let's let's get into the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into the bullshit, bro. That was some real ass shit, bro. But uh, okay, so the capital, the capital was seized. Absolutely. Who would think that people would take over the capital, bro? Did y'all ever think that that would happen so easily? Um, that was the thing. It was like, yo, just bro, no pistols, no nothing. No, they, they had guns. They had guns. Some of them had weapons. Oh, weapons. if you're not using a gun forcefully, if you're not using a gun, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, niggas saying they had guns. They weren't using their guns, bro. They weren't putting their guns to get inside the Capitol or, uh, or anything of sort. So, but I seen the police officer open up the gate. Open up the gate. Like, Come on in. Bro, what? <laughs> oh, it's weekend. So y'all feel like this is planned? I definitely feel like it was planned. Was it planned, Swear? What's up? Let's get you in the in the most. Man, I feel like it was it was staged. Not staged. 
people know about it. What, what's behind it, bro? That's why I, I've been trying to look at the bigger picture. What's behind this? They love Donald Trump. No, I'm saying like we know that. Yeah. What, like I'm thinking of the elites. Yeah. Because regardless of regardless of if Trump set this up or not, uh, regardless of this little minor shit, the elites knew this shit was from the shape. What is the bigger picture behind this? This this capital shit. That's what I'm trying to think. Like, are they are they trying to? Because like I even thought like are they igniting they were trying- other countries? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To yeah. see like nigga, it's this easy. You can run up in here. Like that's where my mind was. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, these niggas, bro. These Trumpers, bro. Or oh, dumb as fuck. You know? Like, <laughs> no, they shit. bro, these bro. niggas like super sheep, man. Like, these niggas, they they get interviewed out there, bro. They whole reason is telling people like, oh, yeah. telling like, niggas like, what they was. But they tell them where they from. They tell them where they from. That ain't how it go when you supposed to be like protest or whatever you want. Bro, they weren't out there. They weren't even out there half the day. They was out there for at least probably six six hours. Fam, they was out there a day. But I'm just saying like... No, they hopped out there. This was a planned operation that people possibly knew was going to occur. Niggas was taking private jets. Like as a... They took private jets. There yes. was people that took private jets to get out there, bro. This shit was planned. Bro, you got think hell. this is like thousands of individuals, man. Huh? Like these niggas work. They went like, during the week. That the dude, you know the dude they said that was on um, Pinelli desk. The white dude, the old white dude. Pinelli, what? That was at post at her desk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They said he was in Florida. They arrested. Yeah, all Florida. them niggas flew out. You know what I'm saying? Like, if anything, that like. They got a face. They got a clubhouse place. <laughs> <laughs> bro, they got some. They like in, yeah, bro. Groovy. Yeah, yeah some. groovy. Some they, they, they got some. definitely locked in on some. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, what's the bigger picture behind this, bro? Like, what do y'all think? Like, what what is gonna birth from this whole matter, bro? I don't think nothing's gonna. I think it's already been born. This is like the result of like more decay, is what I think. I think it's just like people don't have any um. You know, I, I just feel like people don't value themselves. And so, that, like, I think that's the source of racism. But at the same time, bro, this is what America is built on. That's racism. what we forget. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, at the, the foundation of America is racism yeah. and, hate. and hate and genocide. Yeah. That yeah. is what America was built on. Like, that's the, at the foundation, when you go to the start, that's what this joke is. You know what I'm on. saying? What are you white folks even upset about? <laughs> like, I don't get it. These niggas. Cause, cause soon as I seen it, bro, I'm like, they don't land in the capital. I'm like, shit, that's the shit we need to be doing. No, nah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, we need really. to be running in some capitals and yeah. seizing some shit. <laughs> like, why, why, he, why are these white people just from, go to the state capital? They go to the bro, that's what I'm saying. The nation's yeah. capital, fam. Yeah. Yeah. Why are these white yeah. folks feeling the need that they at the end of their rope? It's that false patriotism sometimes. I think that's what it is. Well, like they patriot- over what? Just cause, so is it just because Trump lost? That's why they feel like he did. I don't know what else it could be over. I don't know. I it's just like, this for George Bush. Yeah, no cap. They didn't do this for Bush. And they love Bush. They love Bush. But I'm saying, Bush, Bush rocked out for the, both of his terms, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah Bush, I Bush lived both of his terms. Trump Bush. got interrupted because Trump could be doing for more. Yeah. But see, the thing is, that's why they're trying to impeach Trump now. If they impeach Trump now, like for real, for real, he can't do it. He can't. He can't get reelected like ever. Ever yeah. again. Because oh. you know he can come back and run. Yeah, he can he come, come back, back and run. run. Bro, he this is more. He, 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 he can run. run now. He, he can run, run it back. Oh, look, if, he, if he ran again, would, could he be elected two more terms? Or no, no just, it's one. just one. Yeah, term. one term. He can do one term. Yeah. yeah.